Hey guys, doing it is October 28th. I'm going to be doing a new, a new change, so a totally different nutrient line here for the res. I'll still be using the floor and oven for hand watering uh, inside the tent. Uh, so, but anyway, I'm going to let you know why. This video is going to show you why I'm making the new change and also the how I'm going to be doing the measurements for my reservoir just in case you guys, if you like the way you guys see this works, that way you can have something to go back to and go, oh, okay, that's the measurement. I might, I might also try to write it down on the Grow Journal, so if you want to go to 420 magazine a grow journal uh, there that I link to and then you can see how how I went ahead and uh, exactly what I measured measured uh, per you know gallon of water per five gallons of water whatever all right so before I get into that really quickly I want to let you guys know I'm super excited so five of the plants are cut down and dry of the Mazars over two pounds already off of five plants I'm coming in just as totally totally completely dry weight in the bags I can just set I can set them there for months and they're gonna and they're gonna be this they're gonna be perfect and they're going to just cure perfect. I don't, have, I don't have to open the bag. That's how I dry. I, I do it to where they, they're, they're so dry that when I put them in the bag, all they do is equalize, and then they just stay like that, and that's how they are. And I can literally leave them there for a month, come back, open the bag, and they'll smell great and still be in the exact same condition. They're not going to be too wet, not going to be too dry. They'll be that perfect 62% humidity, um, yeah, with the, you know, the stem snap and all that good stuff. No, It'll never mold and so forth. Anyway, so cause some people go, oh, you probably didn't really dry it all the way. No, it's totally, totally dry. I'll, I'll try to show an updated video of it, um, showing you the weights on the scale and uh, of the biggest plant. The biggest plant was in the, the one I predicted, the front right one, and it yielded uh, 8.89, basically. So basically 8.9 ounces dry. That's over half a pound off one plant. That's the biggest yield I've gotten so far, so I'm super excited about that. So hopefully I can find the time to make that video for you guys where I just take some of those plants and... Um, and then show you guys on the scale what they weigh and what it looks like and everything. Um, I'll definitely be doing a smoke smoke report so you definitely see what it looks like and all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, so fantastic stuff. I still have one more plant to go. Um, that's the one that's been drying in the cold. Um, I just wanted to see if it would make it smell better or not. I like to do little things like that every now and again just to see you know if something's changed since I've done it last time. And uh, yeah, but uh, I don't think it's making a difference. So it's almost done. I'm gonna go ahead. And th I'm gonna think I'm gonna finish off in the grow room to let, let it dry out fast. I'll be done with it. But yeah, so I got that last plant coming in. That's one that was in pure perlite in the left-hand side, the really fat, bushy, short, bushy one. Right, so uh, the next biggest one was in the middle, the front middle, and that one was at like, what was it? I have, I have it all written down in the Grow Journal, Fortune Magazine, for this, for the, for the uh, Super Auto Grow, whatever I called it on there. Uh, I think it was 6.9 ounces, something like that, or 7. I don't know. Anyway, it's on there. It, it came out big. Like I was like really surprised. Little Miss Midget really surprised me. Actually, I think that one was seven point something. Uh, Little Miss Midget really surprised me, and I think she, if I remember correctly, she was 190 grams. So yeah, I remember that. 190 grams. The other one was 217 grams. So whatever that comes out to ounces. I can't remember the ounces uh, conversion on that. But anyway, that's amazing. It's like six point, like I think it was like 6.9 ounces, and the other one is like, um, what is it? Uh, seven points up anyway just fantastic fantastic yields i'm super happy over two pounds off of five plants already that's 33 point something ounces right now off the five plants and i still have one more plant to go so i busted the two pound mark off of six autos man it's fucking crazy and people say that you can't get good yields off it and then and then my next thing is i'm gonna take the nug i'm gonna go get it tested fully tested 100 dollar test to test thc cbds all that stuff and to test the, um, the the mold and everything and to see if it passes. I'm mainly concerned to see if it passes the mold thing. And I am kind of curious what Mazar come up. It'll probably be like around 19% THC. Uh, autos never really yield more than that um, or, or say more than that. But they're still super stony despite their, their test results. It's kind of like Obama Kush. Regular, regular strain. Not It's a you know, photogenic. Not, not a, it's not an auto. And it always tests that. No matter who, who grows it. When you go to the dispensary, it's always at around that 12 to 15 percent THC mark. Yet it blows people away. It's super strong. If anyone's ever smoked a bomb of Kush, you know it's some stony ass shit. Same thing with White Rhino. It always tests low, but it's fucking stony ass shit. Um, and so yeah, uh, Auto Mazar, I think we'll probably test around 19, 18, something like that. But I know it's stony stuff. We'll be doing a smoke report soon. All right, so let's go ahead and get on with this video. Um, just super excited about the weight, and just in case I don't get around to doing those videos, it'll be in this video here. Alrighty then. So the first thing is the reason why is this stuff here clogs the motherfucking drip drip lines too much. It's just too grainy. It's not clean enough, and so yeah, it clogs 
clog shit up and I can't be having that happen. I can't be keep, you know, fucking unclogging shit and cleaning my fucking shit. It's just irritating as hell. So this stuff here, look at, bam, super clear, super clean. My buddy grows with this stuff and had excellent results. He, he was, I, I'm the one who, who turned him on to this stuff. He loved it. And then uh, they, they found this stuff and he used, he's using the powder version though. So it's a little different. And he uses the part A, part B, you have to mix them together. Um, I don't think he knows that though. I think he uses one as veg and one as bloom, but that's not how it's meant to be. Once it's part A and part B, if it's mixing together. But anyway, he's getting good results with it. And I, I saw his results and I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Because I saw what he was getting with the Floranova, I saw he got with this. I'm like, okay, that's fantastic. If it's cheaper, getting great results, I'll, I'll try it, you know. This came, this came, I decided to get this a little more expensive than the powder kind, um, especially on shipping. But um, even. For two hundred dollars, I got three bottles of this, so three gallons of this, and one gallon of Part B, so that Part B is uh, different numbers, so that um, for finishing, so that when the plant gets more toward in the thing, or you can just add a little bit of that to to this and just kind of bring it up. I'll, I'll probably just add a little bit of PK to it, uh, you know, to bring up the to bring up the PKs for for when it, when it's in a flower, like right now. Um, so I'll just you know, I'll just I'll just do I'll do the Moab more often instead of just three times in the grill. I'll do it like maybe every. Uh, either tank or something like that actually added to the, the reservoir itself uh, maybe even every, every tank I don't know anyway so definitely what I need to do though is one thing I've noticed about this stuff that I need to do is one the calcium and magnesium now these numbers are good these are fine the, the MPK uh, numbers are fine I'm not worried about that again I, I might add a little bit of just PK uh, monster bloom to it um, just to bring out the PK a little bit uh, but I'm not you know, that, even this is fine you know it's a, you know it's just, this is a 487 this is a four three five. Um, I think it'll work great, but I still might want to bring those numbers up a little bit. So like I'll use more up in there, just so that maybe a just a, just a little bit. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna use yet. And then uh, what really concerns me though is the calcium is two percent and the magnesium is 0.5. On the four Nova Bloom, you'll see that the calcium is four. If you calcium four, magnesium two. So four percent, two percent. So that's a uh, you know half and half of the half. So if you were to Reduce it down to two, it should be two and one, but this is two and point and point five. So the ratio is not even the same, but that's fine because what this works out good for me. There's no sulfur in here. Sulfur is really important. So your first three ones are MPK, your second three ones are calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Sulfur is missing altogether. Don't know why. That's really strange. Uh, maybe he expects you to have sulfur in your in your soil or or whatever. I don't know. He says he likes to run rock wool, and rock wool don't have no sulfur in it, as far as I know. And yeah, so maybe 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 he uh, uses a little bit of Epsom salt. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Anyway, if you do order from this guy, let's get that site's kind of complicated to use. And right now, if you go to the site and try to order it, he only has $100 orders uh, for gallons, and it's the liquid part A and part B. So you won't you won't be getting this. This is the one part. Uh, you have to call him and say, I want this one part. And the problem is when you call him, he's gonna want to talk your ear off. And so you got you to keep trying to get them, you know, to the point of, hey, I want to order this. Please take my name down. And that way you know that I wanted the, um, the one part instead of the A and B. And I want the one part liquid if that's what you want. You can, you can try the powder. Uh, my buddy tries the part A and B powder. Works great. I think he also has a one part powder. Uh, but the powder is going to be a little, it's not going to be quite as clean as this stuff here, which is why I went with the liquid. So, yeah, the liquid's a little more expensive. It won't make as many of gallons of water for the price. But... It's a lot more cleaner, so it's not going to clog up. It shouldn't clog up my my drippers nearly as easy as the other stuff would. Like this stuff is just clogging up way too easy. Now another alternative, I'd, if I didn't buy this stuff, is I was going to use what I used to use for some years was used to we, these right here, and I just use the floor. I used the uh, what's called a Lucas. Well, it's, it's not the Lucas formula. It's a modified Lucas formula, which was six milliliters of micro and six milliliters of sick or sumi six milliliters of micro and nine milliliters of bloom per gallon of water that was the ratio i used and then i added the the 10 milliliters of calmac plus per for the same or excuse me one two milliliters one to two milliliters per gallon of calmac plus excuse me calmac plus on top of this right here that worked great and i, and I would use that through the whole entire grill of course i wouldn't like use at that strength right away you know I would do the math and be like, okay, well, six and nine, let's go to like divide, you know, two goes into six, uh, three and becomes three and two goes to nine becomes, you know, well, the actually two doesn't go into nine. So I anyway, I can't remember the exact measurement. Sometimes I would just make a full strength measurement and then I would dilute it with water 
and then just add a little more CalMac to it, and that's what I would use for my lower strength when the plant was younger. And then as I got older, I went to a full strength. Um, and then sometimes I would, you know, throughout the math, I just don't know why I can't do it right now. It's been a while since I've done that. But honestly, for hand watering, Floronova, grow and bloom, the bomb. You can actually just use Floronova grow for the whole entire thing. I've done that for a long time too. It's fucking fantastic. I love it. So for hand, for hand watering, it's just a fantastic. You've seen my results. You've seen it through my channel. Um, yeah, so uh, I would normally would have, got, would have gone to this if I didn't learn about my buddy using this Kogos. And if I didn't see his results, I would have just went, went back to this right here for the, uh, the reservoir. But so I learned about the Kogos. So I figured, hey, what the hell? I might as well give it a shot and see what happens. So what I'll be doing, I'm not sure of the exact uh, measurements yet. I'm going I'm to do them right now. And so I'm going to start out, it says 12 milliliters per gallon of water. So I'm going to do that. So I have 25 gallons of water in my res right now. I'm going to do 12 milliliters times 25. And that's how many milliliters I'll start out with. And then after that, I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to measure the, uh, the EC and see where that's at. Because I already know, I'm also, I also want to add the, uh, actually I'll add the CalMac first. Because I'm going to add uh, five, basically I'm going to do one milliliter per gallon of water. So I'm going to, I'm going to do 25 milliliters of CalMac Plus right now, and then I'm going to do the 12 milliliters times 25, and I'll, I'll, first I'll mix up the CalMag, then I'll mix this up, and then I'm going to test the EC. If the EC is around 1.6, then I know I'm doing pretty good, that's where I want to be. If not, then I need to add more of this. And then I'm going to add a little bit of Epsom salts. I'm going to probably do like maybe a, a teaspoon per 5 gallons of water, so I'll probably do like 5 teaspoons per, per 25 gallons of water. That'll give me that sulfur and magnesium because all, all Epsom salts is is magnesium sulfate. That's what it is, and so it's magnesium and sulfur, and so that will and that that, that kind of works out because the CalMag will add a little bit of magnesium and calcium, so which will bring these two numbers up, but that number will still be a little bit low, which is fine because I'm going to be adding the Epsom salts, which will add a little bit more magnesium, and so that'll make those bounce out to more like the numbers of Floronova, and then I'll have that sulfur, which should which should also be equal about equal to the magnesium. So it should be really close to numbers in Floronova once I add the magnesium and the CalMag Plus. And that should make this a well, well-rounded, well balanced uh, nu nu nutrient. Um, for while it's in um, growth, and, and maybe uh, very, very pre-flower, maybe you can keep it like this. But right now they're really starting to put pet up put on the flower, so I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna put a little bit of PK booster in there. And what I'll probably do, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna put in there of this. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, Monster Bloom in there. Yep, Monster Bloom. Or I still have some of this stuff left too. This is the weaker. We, it's much, much weaker. It's a 056 by Ionic. It's a PK boost. And you can just use any PK boost you want. It just adds a little bit of PK to it. This stuff is super, super concentrated uh, at, at 05030. I don't know why my camera's having a hard time wanting to focus in on shit. Come on. That uh, doesn't like the dark. There we go. So 0, 50, 30. and what I'll do is I'll probably just use like maybe a teaspoon of this for all 25 gallons of water because uh, I just need a little bit of boost. I don't need much. And then when I do big boost, like when I want my big PK boost, I'll do that watering by hand. And I'll just kind of do a little bit on the top of the plant uh, by hand with just a little bit of PK boost and a little bit of CalMag and a little bit of uh, the normal stuff. Or maybe just a little bit of CalMag, a little bit of, a little PK boost, and that's it. And I'll just help it kind of get that little bit of more PK in there that it needs. I only do that three times to grow, but this stuff I'll probably be adding almost to every single um, to every single res whenever I add water to the res, nutrients to the res. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to push pause while I go ahead and add the CalMag and that stuff, and I'll see where I'm at. All right, hey, how, how you guys doing? So the first thing I want to show you is the absolute amazingness. In this. Look at look how look how transparent this is. You can't even tell there's anything in there. It looks like water. Look at that. That's with 300 milliliters in there, so that's 12 milliliters per gallons of water of this bad stuff right here. I, I like this stuff so far. Like the way, not even the um, general hydroponics, uh, you know, when you use the micro and the bloom together, get that. That's the, that's see-through. Remember when I put the four nova in there? Remember how how like dark it was? You can barely you can like if it was this deep, you couldn't even see that pump down there. There's no way. Like you could barely see the pump when it was just like an inch above the pump. I only have like 10 gallons in there. I have 25 gallons in there. Look at this. It is clear as can be. So right now I got uh, one milliliter per gallon with uh, calcium or CalMag Plus in there and 12 milliliters of the Kogos one part system per uh, per gallon of water. So 25 gallons of water times times 12 equal 300 milliliters. So I put 300 milliliters in there and after I added all that to it, 
it brought I me mean, also added one one uh, milliliter of peroxide of that super peroxide to it per gallon of water uh, that doesn't really change the uh, EC though so that brought me to an EC of 1.5 so almost right on the dot where I want to be all I have to do now is add a little bit of the Epsom salts and see what that brings me I'm gonna do one teaspoon so per five gallons I'm gonna do five teaspoons of that per 25 gallons of water real quick and then we'll see what that brings us at the EC uh, the pH is super low so I'm gonna have to use a lot of pH up all right, so I decided to go ahead and add seven teaspoons of the uh, Epsom salt to 25, to 25 gallons of water. The reason why is five teaspoons didn't change anything EC wise, so I put two more teaspoons in there, which brought me to 1.6 EC. That's pretty much right where I want to be. Now, the only thing I want to add now is just a little bit of PK booster. And I'm really not sure it's totally necessary at this stage in their life. Um, I actually purposely broke this top over because look how tall she was getting. This was the this is the Royal Royal Queen C's Critical Auto Auto Critical. Look at that, it's just way too tall. It's like getting onto the light. So I went ahead and just bent her over. All I did is I gave her a good pinch like this. You just kind of pinch her good and then just let her flop over so she doesn't actually break. If you look closely there, you can see she's not actually broken. She's not actually broken, yeah. So anyway, that will make it to where all these other ones will grow a little bit taller. And even those ones might just be a little too tall. The whole thing is just too big. I don't like when they do that. Big stretchy plants like the Euphoria. Um, woo, Magnum is doing good. Look at her. Oh my goodness. This is the Northern Lights. I've never seen Northern Lights do this. It's crazy. This is in the pure perlite. This is the only one that's in pure perlite. It seems like with the drip feed, in this particular system where you got the little these little pots these type of pots look at that she drinks everything she gets fed three times a day and she just drinks it up and uh, she doesn't get a chance for it to fill to pour over into the flood thing i have it there just in case though you can see the top of her stay nice and moist and she is heavy ah uh, yeah she's got a nice heavy pot full of water i really gotta spray these plants again because these motherfucking goddamn things god i hate these things Thrips, fucking bastards. Look at these fuckers on here. I don't think you can see these. See that one right there? I don't know if you can see that. See it moving? Let's try to focus on it. See it? Little fuckers eat the leaves. Ah, ah, kill you. So, um, this leaf. Contaminated leaf, gotta get out of here. So, I gotta spray these one more time. I haven't done so. I know I said I was going to do it, and I haven't done it yet. Get my way up some salts. Get my way meter. About stepped on it and broke it. <sighs> really irritated today. Well, not today totally. Just right now, because I had to do so much shit in a row. Just hate it sometimes. You know, clean this whole thing out, refilling and all that stuff. Right, so only thing I need to do now is add maybe just a little bit of uh, PK. Probably a little monster bloom. And, that, and then she'll be good. And I'll be uh, see how she does with all that. Uh, that one over there is, this right here is the Dark Devil. Look at that. Ooh, Dark Devil's doing good. And over there we got the uh, little Bluetooth Syrup. Bluetooth Syrup didn't blow up big time this time. I think it's because, remember she, I knocked her over an accident and like half of her shit fell out. That probably threw her into stress mode and she just started flying. You stress these things out at all, bam, they just start flying on you. I feel like that's why I'm hoping that when I broke that fucking top there, not broke it, but bent it over, I hope that stresses her out, makes her fucking start flowering, because goddamn, she's too big. She's just growing too much. And look at, she's not even done growing. Just like the Euphoria, I can't have a big, I can't have her growing up into the light like the Euphoria did, you know, this gigantic plant that's just too big. <laughs> I don't like it, so I don't know if I'm gonna be growing uh, critical again by, by Royal Queen Seeds. I just don't like that whole hugeness to her that she has. If so, I might have to grow under a T5 first to slow her growth down and make her more uh, compact. But look at the node spacing on the on this chick right here, Dark Devil. She might surprise me and do okay this time because look at that. She had nice node spacing. She has a good amount of tops there. Um, the bottom tops that I trained never quite, you know, grew out big. So I don't think she likes being trained like that. I'm gonna have to do something over here. This stuff is not getting as much light, so I'm going to have to move that plant just over and back a little bit, move this plant up and forward. I'll do that in a little bit, but can't do it with one hand too hard. I can, it's just why make it harder on myself. But her tops are actually filming good. they got nice, good-sized tops on them right now. 
The hairs and everything are looking nice and good. Come on, why aren't you focusing more, camera? So the hairs nice and good. Um, I don't know if I have out of focus on it. I might not actually. I need to check that. Anyway, so I want to go look at this one real quick again. Try to get her. Look at that. Look how big and round she is. She's so big and beefy. Look at that. After like go all the way around, she's she's huge. I can't believe this for Northern Lights by Royal Queen Seeds. Uh, I usually never get good yields off this plant, but I like her smoke. Really nice smoke. It's just. Uh, like the way she grows and stuff, just always got good results off her, just never big. Again, like that leaf out of the way. But yeah, so those thrips. The only thing about this one, the Dark Devil, is her leaves are starting to show. See how she's starting to show like she's not getting everything right. Like maybe she doesn't like the the change, you know, the slight alterations or change in the pH of the res, whatever it is, but she's not happy with it because her leaves are starting to show some funkiness, like look at right in there. It almost looks like how it looks like when you get, when your roots aren't happy, but I'm sure they are. They've been happy every single time so far. It could also be that, you know, she is in the 100% rock wool, but so is Buddha Surf in 100% rock wool. And she's nice and green and happy as can be, but Buddha Surf is not nearly as picky. Dark Devil, I think, was a little bit picky last time too. But it might be because of the, uh, the res pH. So what what's been happening is the res pH has been rising up to like 6.1, 6.0 pretty fast. And um, you know, I have to come in here before she before she waters. I keep forgetting she waters at like eight 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 o'clock, and I keep forgetting to get in here before eight o'clock and check her pH and then pH down her to about five point eight or so to make sure that when she gives that first watering of the day, that it's the proper pH. Um, I wish I had some automated. I know I know they make them. They're just really expensive, and I don't know how good they work. But yeah, so look how clean that water is. So clean. God. That's awesome. So that shouldn't clog the things up anytime soon. So okay, this is a long ass video. So now what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of Moab. I'll let you know how much I add and see what the uh, EC comes at. And then I'll see how much pH up I need to use to get to where I need it. All right, so I added uh, a little over a tablespoon of the Monster Bloom. Monster Bloom. And that brought us to 1.7 EC. And now I'm checking the uh, pH here real quick. Let's see where that's at, see how much. Uh, we're at 3.4, 3.3, so it's really low. So she's gonna need a lot. Now, you can see the watercolor has changed slightly. She's still really, really clear. Can I get the right angle on here? I'm blocking all the light. The light's not on this side of the room yet, but anyway, still super clear, but has a slight purple tint to it from the uh, Monster Bloom. Right, so now, gotta do some pH up. Let's see where we're at. I put in uh, 15 milliliters of pH up, and she's hardly moved at all. So it's 3.6, so yeah, she's gonna take a lot of freaking pH up. Wow, that's some, that's some serious, uh, strong, like, acidic stuff there that, uh, oh, damn, let's see here. Let's throw another 10 milliliters in there. Let's see what happens. Damn, see how awesome and clear that water is though? That pH up at first looks a little bit cloudy, but you just stir it around and it goes away. I got the I got the other I got the two pumps and the one that pumps it through feeds the plants, the bigger pump and the smaller pump that uh, pumps the water up and around and circulates, keeps the water circulating. Holy shit. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if I like that about this stuff, because man, if I have to use that much pH up, I might not be happy with this stuff. That's a lot of pH up to have to use. Um, this stuff isn't super expensive or nothing, but still, you know, all, all, the, all the little money adds up over time. I don't know how much I'm going to use. How much pH up am I going to use with this stuff? Let's go with, uh, I don't know. Let's see, I'm going to try. Another 10 milliliters or so. See what happens. Another 10 milliliters. I normally pause it while I do this, but eh, what the hell. I'll pause it for a second. All right, so I had to use uh, 40 or 55 milliliters of pH up for 25 gallons of water. So I don't know what that comes out to. I used to use eight milliliters, you know, anywhere from seven to eight milliliters. Uh, when I use when I used to use this pure RO water. Now this is pure RO water, but remember this adds a little bit of PPM back into it and also raises the pH. This is the RO water that adds a little bit of calamide back into the water. 
that, that cool reverse osmosis system that runs up through the final membrane being a, uh, a marble membrane and that uh, you know, marble broken down. And that adds CalMag back into the, the water, which brings the PPM from zero to about 30 or 40 PPM because of the added CalMag, CalMag in there. Uh, now it's at 5.5, so I'm just giving it a chance to kind of regulate for a little bit and see where it goes, goes to. So it's at 5.5 right now. So that's more pH up than I had to use when I had Floronova with the zero p p PM of uh, the RO water, the RO water that's underneath my sink, the stuff I use right now in the grow tent. That's what I've been, that's what I've been watering the grow tent with. So when I use that water, um, which has a much lower, a much lower pH, and then I add the Floronova at about like seven teaspoons per five gallons of water with um, five, uh, five to 10 milliliters per five gallons of water of the CalMag Plus, and I would then have to add about uh, anywhere from seven to eight milliliters per five gallons of water. So right now I added more than that. Um, that would be almost, per 25 gallons of water, that'd be almost 50, probably like 45, something like that. I had to add 10 more milliliters more to get it just to 5.5. That's crazy. So that's a lot of pH, but it's not too much more than what I used to use when I um, just had RO water. But now when I use Floronova with this water, I didn't have to use nearly as much. It was like maybe... I think it was like three milliliters per gallon, or per five gallons, something like that, instead of eight. So it was, it was a lot different because this already had a higher pH anyway. Uh, so this stuff has a this stuff is really acidic. That's the only thing about Kogo. It's super acidic, which means you're using a lot more pH up. But because it's super acidic, it might make it to where um, it stays more balanced. So right now it's 5.5. We'll see what it is tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll, I probably won't make a video about that, man. I'm probably just going to update it. I'll, 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 do, I'll do a message update on the Google+. Plus and maybe a message update on the actual um, YouTube channel, like we can just make a message update. And then I'm also gonna make an update on the actual Grow channel, the 420 uh, forum. So if you wanna see like, I, sometimes when I don't feel like making a video, I just update tech stuff on the, um, on the 420 forum. So check that out. And yeah, so right now it's at 5.5, staying stable. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that good. That's good enough to water with. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check it tomorrow and see what happens. Because usually what happens is with the, uh, the Floronova, I'll pH it to about 5.5, and the next day I come in here, it's already at 6.0. Then I, got, then I, gotta, put, I gotta put like another five to 10 milliliters in there of pH down, and then the next day, she's back up to 6.0, and I gotta put another five to 10 milliliters of pH down. Usually she'll stable herself if I have enough, but usually she goes to the water before she stables herself. Um, so it's like, I have to throw all the way up to the top of like you know, 50, 60 gallons, and then do a couple days of pH downing before she would finally, you know, kind of reach an equilibrium and kind of stay at 5.8. 5, 5 and then I would have to, uh, you know, well, actually, sorry. First day, I would pH down here to 5.5, the first time I filled the reservoir. The next day, I'd come in and pH it to 5.8. Then it would be at about 6.0 when I, when, I, when I wake up the next day. And I kept doing that every day. And eventually, she stabilizes and stay at 5.7, 5.8. Then it takes about three times, four times of pH down here before she stabilizes. Well... That, that, that would mean that the amount of water she goes through, I'd have to fill her up all the way, do that for a few days, and then go on vacation. <laughs> or I guess I could just let her feed with 6.0 water, but that's not the best thing to do, you know, with uh, the kind of medium I grow and the, the style I grow in. So, yeah, anyway, um, maybe this stuff will stay more stable, so we'll see. So check out the results in that, and we'll see if she stays more stable. Maybe I'll wake up tomorrow, she'll only be 5.0. 6 or something like that and the next day she'll only be 5.6 maybe she'll because it's a much more acidic um, acidic nutrient maybe she'll stay more pH balanced which would be awesome if so and even, even if not I'm sure that if I use less pH up that is basically um, you know pH are up to like you know 4 point uh, or 5.0 or something like that and then wait like a couple hours she might naturally rise to like 5.5 and then, and then more like stabilize out that way. Um, I've done that with Floronova too, remember, uh, when I did those plants upstairs where I would, basically I would, I would put the Floronova in here with the water and I would let it sit for like 12 hours to a day. And then I would check the pH and then I would pH up or down it as it needed. And it was usually a little bit of pH um, up. And then, and, and I just used a little bit of it and then uh, like I think it was three milliliters and that was the, the pure hour water. And then she would stabilize and she would pretty much be at 5.8 for the next three days or so until I had to like maybe pH down or just a little bit. Uh, so it's all a matter of how much pH up in there. So if you put like a bunch of pH, like right now I put a bunch of pH up in there, that's probably gonna be too much. So it's probably gonna make her rise, wanna rise. But I'm hoping that the acidity of the actual nutrient itself counteracts the pH 
and makes it to where it just kind of stays where it's at. They both counteract each other and kind of neutralize each other. If not, what I'm going to have to start doing is I think I'm going to have to start um, like I did upstairs when I did that one grow with that, uh, that hempy grow in those little white buckets upstairs with the six autos and got 12 ounces off that one UFO hood with a 600 watt uh, bulb in there. Anyway, you can check that grow out. It's in a playlist here on this channel. So what I might do then is uh, do something like that where I'll, I'll like I said, I'll, I'll just pH her up to 5.0 or so. Or, or what I'll do is I'll, I'll, put, I'll, put the, I'll put the nutrients in there and then I will make sure I turn that off just in case I forget. I don't want her watering with like fucked up pH. And I'll turn that off so she can't actually water or I'll just turn the pump off so she can't accidentally water the plants. And then I'll, I'll wait after adding nutrients in there and see how much she rises, if she rises at all after, after like a couple hours or 12 hours. And then, I'll, and then I'll figure out how much pH I need to add and how many hours I need to wait before she balances out. And then I can reach that balancing state to where I don't have to keep pH down in her every day. I can just uh, go, oh, okay, so, you know, like, like, like anyway, hope that makes sense. Like I said, with the, I figured out the balancing with the Four Nova and the, and the CalMag. Basically, if you use RO water, that's true RO water, that has about a 6.3 uh, a pH in it naturally when it's zero. Then you add in the, the uh, five milliliters per five gallons. So I just had, I took a five gallon bucket and I put the five milliliters in there of the CalMag Plus. And then I would put like, I think it was seven teaspoons of Floronova Bloom, seven to eight, I can't remember. It was either seven or eight teaspoons of Floronova Plus. Mix that all together. And then I would put three milliliters of pH up and I let it sit for a day. And the next day I would check it, it'd be like right around 5.7, 5.8. And it would stay like that. It would stay pretty damn stable for a few days. And that, that's where I found out that, that mixture was. But if I were to do it right away, if I were to put the, uh, you know, five milliliters of the uh, Cal, or excuse me, if I were to put the five milliliters of CalMac Plus, the 78 teaspoons of Floronova Bloom to the five gallons of RO water, pure RO water with no added calcium. And then I would add right away to get her to 5.5, it took seven to eight uh, milliliters of pH up. That got her to that 5.8 prop thing, but the problem is the next day when I check the water, it's like 6.0, like so it didn't stabilize, see? So by, um, you gotta figure out how much pH up to add to it and then let it stabilize. It's probably gonna be half of what I put in there. So I just put, you know, 50, what I say? 50 milliliters or 55 milliliters, I can't remember. I think I put 55 milliliters in there. Yeah, 55 milliliters. So do like half that, like just do like maybe 25 milliliters, which is a little, 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 little less than half, but throw 25 milliliters in there, wait 12 hours and see where she's at. Um, then it was mix everything the same and then put only 25 milliliters in there, wait, wait a few hours, so get at least six hours um, and then see where the pH is at and see if it's uh, anywhere near 5.5. And then, so that's what I'll probably have to start doing. That way it takes a little more preparation ahead of time thinking because she waters at eight o'clock. So I have to do this like earlier in the day like uh, you know, like around one o'clock or so, because she doesn't water between one o'clock and, and, and seven o'clock at night, uh, between one o'clock in the afternoon to seven o'clock at night, she doesn't water at all during that time frame. So all I have to do is wake up, whatever time I wake up, make sure to remember if I'm here at the house to go ahead, make a, make, a, make a batch of water. And then after I make a batch of water at that time to put only half the amount of pH in there. And anyway, I'll figure it out. I'll let you guys know what, what, it, what, it, what exactly works out. I already know what works out with the, uh, the exact Measurements. So we're going to close this out. Actually, I guess I'll look at the plants while I'm talking. I already know the exact measurements for flowing over bloom and, and, and CalMag Plus. If you want to reproduce that, that is, you want a reservoir that's stable, just just multiply it upwards. So for five gallons of water, again, it's five milliliters of CalMag Plus and seven, I think it was seven teaspoons of Floronova Bloom and then eight milliliters, no, excuse me, only three milliliters of pH up. Let it sit for about 12 hours and then and then test the pH on it. It should have stabilized at about 5.5 to 5.8. And then it should stay stabilized like that for several days before you have to put just a little bit of pH down in it. A very, very little bit. Uh, and then it'll, it'll stay stable again for a few more days. So that worked out really good for upstairs because remember upstairs, I was leaving the water in there for two days, two to three days before I watered again. And so I wanted to make sure that that pH remained stable for that entire two days. Now, if I'm watering every single day, I don't really care that it rises up to 6.0 um, before I water again, because I'm watering every single day. However, this, what happens is if I, if I forget, it waters at eight o'clock and I come in here and I check the pH at around nine or something like that, and I, I pH it down to back to 5.8, if 
by the time it waters again at 2 in the morning, it might already be back up to 6.0. So it's like constantly watering at 6.0 every time it waters. You know, and it waters three times a day. So I got to make sure, I got to find a way to get this stable. And hopefully this shit's more stable and it's easier to stabilize the Fornova. I already know the kind of me the method of measurement with Fornova. It's just having the patience to do it. You know, to like, because you can't just water with it right away. You have to actually wait like 6 to 12 hours or maybe even 24 hours before it stabilizes by only adding 3 milliliters. So yeah, it's a, wait, it's a waiting game, but it will balance itself out and it'll stay balanced for a long time. Uh, so anyway, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Sorry for the long video. Um, hopefully some of this info is, is useful for you guys. And uh, now you can see why I'm, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I'll get this, I'll get this shit worked out and dialed in with this new uh, nutrient line. And uh, hopefully these plants will continue loving it, or not continue loving it, hopefully they will love it and continue to be nice and beautiful like they are now. All right guys, thanks for watching, double peace.